everyone, so we are about to give you some trivia about the brief history of information and communications technology in the Philippines. With regards to mails, telephones, telegraph and telegram, and emails and social networking sites. Before the emergence of postal services, the Datos nobles had messengers, which they called Umalahokan, who was tasked to announce a newly enacted law to the barangay, smallest government unit in the Philippines. It was only in 1767 that the first post office in the Philippines was established in Manila. In 1779, the postal district encompassed Manila and the entire archipelago of the Philippines. In 1783, the Postal Service was organized in the Philippines. Overseas mails from the Philippines were conveyed to Europe by Spanish ships by eastbound routes through Mexico. In 1840, Manila became the center of postal service in Asia. In 1875, Spain joined the Universal Postal Union. The exchange of letters and communication was only done by a bataguero. Postman, but the girls either walk or use horse to deliver the letters. There were no envelopes that time. Letters were just folded, and it would take two months before the communication could be received by the address. No stamp was used until 1854, when Governor General Antonio de Urbistondo issued a circular for its use. On the same year, there was already a mail service between Manila and Hong Kong. During the Filipino-American War, President Emilio Aguinaldo ordered the establishment of a postal service to provide postal services to Filipinos. On September 15, 1902, Act No. 462 was enacted creating the Bureau of Post. On April 4, 1919, an American flyer rules law made some exhibition flight in Manila. To recognize the extraordinary event, special cards were postally canceled by Bureau of Post, thus inaugurating the first aerial mail service in the archipelago. On January 1, 1922, the Philippines finally joined the Universal Post Union. Did you know that on the year 1926, the headquarters building of the Bureau of Post was completed, which is called the Manila Central Post Office. It was designed by Juan M. Arellano and Thomas Mapua in a neoclassical style, and it was under the supervision of the architectural firm of Pedro Sciocci and Company. It was considered as one of the most beautiful buildings in the Philippines. It was located in the district of Intramuros, at the bank of Pasig River and its front faces the Liwasang Bonifacio Plaza, which is now called Plaza Loton. During the World War II, the Manila Central Post Office was destroyed, and it was rebuilt in the year 1946. In that same year, the first airmail stamps in the Philippines was printed with the words Airmail Madrid Manila 1926. In commemorating the journey of the Spanish aviators, Eduardo Galarza and Joaquin Loriga from Madrid and arrived in Manila on May 13, 1926 by their private plane. The Philippines only released its first regular airmail stamp on June 30, 1941. This stamp showed a giant clipper flying over an open sea on which a Mauro Vinta is sailing peacefully. In the year 1987, President Corazon Aquino signed the Executive Order No. 125, which renamed the Bureau as Postal Service Office or PSO, which is under the Department of Transportation and Communication. After five years, the PSO became owned by the government and renamed it as Philippine Postal Corporation, or commonly known as PhilPost. I see. So that is the history of our PhilPost. But let me give you another interesting facts in the history of ICT. That is... The history of telephones. Did you know that as 
early as 1890, Manila had a telephone service. Although it was on a very limited scale, it initially gave service to more than 100 clients, including the offices of the Archbishop and the Governor of Intramuros. Where in 1882, the Manila Hong Kong Overseas Telegram was placed via Cape Linao in Pangasinan. And in 1887, the first inter-island submarine cable linked Manila to the Visayan areas such as Iloilo, Bacolod, and Cebu. Hmm, I see. So that is the start of telephones. Well, I also did some research by the way. Phone lines and radio relationships were presented in Manila in 1905. Towns and common capitals were connected together by phones, transmit lines, and radio. In 1906, the Bureau of Post changed over its phone circuits to transmit. In 1914, another phone system utilizing magneto or sort of switchboards was set up in Iloilo City. Ten years later, the Negros Telephone Company was put up. And after the establishment of the telephone system in Iloilo, the first automatic telephone system to become operational in the Philippines was installed in Manila. In 1922, Estevanot, a former major in the U.S. Army, worked for the purchase of the Telephone and Telegraph Company in Cebu, Panay, and Negros, which are all in the Visayas. And on November 1928, a franchise was awarded to him for the establishment of Philippine Long Distance Telephone Company, or PLDT. In 1926, a new type of transmitter was used in Quezon and in Cebu. In 1930, the Bureau of Post established the first teleprinter circuit between Manila and Batangas. Whoa! So PLDT since 1926? That is so amazing. Yeah, so true. And so old. Shh, careful. <laughs> so, and then, a radio service was introduced in 1933, and the Filipinos at that time may communicate as distant as London, Paris, Vienna, New York, and San Francisco. In 1935, the use of phones came as a requested industry, and the Filipinos are very delighted in transmitting their data and messages rapidly. Phone stations were set up in key towns and territories such as Cebu, Davao, Iloilo, Negros, and other territories. So, to continue, in 1933, RCA Communications established the first radio telephone circuit between Manila and United States in joint operation with the PLDT. In 1948, the Bureau of Telecommunications introduced the first domestic radio telephone or radiophone service. And in 1969, the Butel introduced the first domestic telex service that can exchange textual communications and data directly and securely to each user. In 1970, the Butel introduced the first commercially operated tropospheric scatter system, also known as troposcatter. It is a method of communicating with microwave radio signals over a considerable distances. And of course, the last but not the least, in 1967, the Philippines had been recognized as a primary Southeast Asian nation to build up and work a soil station when the Philippine Communications Satellite Organization or FILM Comcast in the Nairisal. In 1972, the direct phone service was built up by the United States, United Kingdom, France, and Singapore. Now, home and trade foundations still utilize the landline phone or settled line phone to communicate. In any case, in terms of client or user, 
it is persistently decreasing. I'm going to discuss about the telegraph and the telegram. Did you know that in 1871, the main telegraph line was introduced in the country? Following two years, telegraph services opened up in better places. In 1878, the Spanish government perceived the requirement for the communication system that would interconnect the Philippines to the rest of the world and welcome bidders for the foundation of a media communications interface between the Philippines and Hong Kong. The Eastern Extension Australasia and China Telegraph Company, presently cable and wireless, was granted the ideal for a 40-year admission to set down and set up a submarine telegraph cable among Luzon and British grown colony. It was said by Okindo and Okindo in 2018. In 1880, the submerged ocean cable was finished arriving at Bolino, Pangasinan, a sum of 535 nautical miles from Pangasinan, another 160 mile overland cable was set out right to Manila. Before the Treaty of Paris was endorsed, there were already 65 government telegraph workplaces in activity in the nation of which 49 were in Luzon, 9 in Panay, 4 in Negros, and 3 in Cebu. The stations were interconnected by 2,818 kilometers of telegraph lines. In 1898, Emilio Aguinaldo gave a declaration authoritatively opening a telegraph service and a postal service. On that same year, there were 5,478 telegraph lines. In 1902, in the early American occupation, the telegraph service was handled by a telegraph division under the constabulary. In 1906, it was moved to the Bureau of Post. In 1910, the Bureau of Post changed over the greater part of the phone lines into telegraph circuits. With the presentation of wireless telecommunication, the Bureau of Post set up its own wireless station in 1919. While in 1935, there were 13,585 lines and around 500 telegraph officials in different regions. After the conflict, Bureau of Telecommunications abolished the Bureau of Post that was made to restore the message network annihilated by war. The first secretly possessed homegrown telegraph organization to work in the nation was the Clavicilia Radio System or CRS in 1947. On that year, in 1947, there were 169 operational telegraph stations interconnected by 3,377 kilometers of transmitted landlines. In 1962, PT and T, or Philippine Telegraph and Telephone Corporation, was established. It was one of the primary organizations to offer national telegrams and analog significant distance public voice services. Telegram and telephone utilities turned into two basic methods for communication until 1980s. In the mid-1990s, cell phone industry thrived in the Philippines. Piltel set up the PLDT, was the principal supplier of mobile services in the country. It worked under the mobile line, brand, utilizing analog innovation. In the following years, Islacom, Globe, and Smart entered the mobile communication services. While in 2013, because of the current modern communication system, the Philippine government officially chose to close the telegram service in the Philippines. While on September 20, 2013, the last message in the Philippines was sent. About telegram. A telegraph developed in 1830s and 1840s by Samuel Morris and other inventors. The telegraph revolutionized long-distance communications. It worked by transmitting electrical signals over a wire between stations. 
Next, in 1941, there was already extensive nationwide telegraph network with 449 telegraph office interconnected by 4,607 kilometers of overland telegraph lines and 326 nautical miles of submarine cables. Next, the first transatlantic telegraph cable vastly reduced the communication time between Europe and North America. What used to take 10 days via ship could be done in minutes, use the transatlantic telegraph line. In order to send via telegraph, there needed to be the telegraph machine, once on the center side and one on the receiver side. Both telegraph would have needed to be connected via wires. And last, for over a hundred years, the telegraph was a primary tool used to send printed information. Emails and social networking sites The snail mail was also affected by the invention of email or electronic mail. The first recorded email was sent by Rim Tomlinson in 1971. The email is nothing but a test message to himself. Today, people all over the world use email to communicate and send receive important documents. On the other hand, social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram were primarily invented to upload a profile and make friends. These sites enable a person to communicate personally with each other through personal or chat messages. Through emails and social networking sites, communication become more reliable, affordable, fast, and efficient. That's all for today, and we hope you have learned something and some trivia that we gave. See you again in our next video!